there a second question? Yes. Um, how is teaching co-op economics different from teaching mainstream, mainstream economics or even political economics that ignore co-ops? How is cooperative economics different from teaching mainstream economics or even political economy? I guess that's what the mm -hmm. question is. Um, great questions. Uh, <laughs> so, um, it's different in a couple of ways. First of all, mainstream economics, and I'm going to try to uh, this is probably a two-hour lecture, so I'm going to try to do it in five minutes. <laughs> um, mainstream economics is actually a very rigid field of study. There are a huge number of assumptions. They've tried to make it into like a physical science where there's the rules of gravity or whatever, and if you don't follow those rules, then nothing works, right? Which is not true, but that's how it's taught and that's how it exists. So there's all these assumptions about every economic agent being doing and acting rationally the same way as any other economic agent as long as they make the same income and something else, right? There's all these notions about right supply and demand that is if you have more demand, then the price goes up. If you have more supply, the price goes down, which isn't really true either, especially because most of, most of prices are determined by monopolies. Um, but anyway, so you have all those kinds of rigid rules that get taught in mainstream economics that have nothing to do with all the stuff we're talking about now. Mainstream economics doesn't, I mean, they, they might care about how many people in your family, but they don't actually care about anything else like identity, race, gender, right? They don't believe in inequality because inequality isn't rational. Um, and so it's hard to have any of these kind of conversations in mainstream economics. And when it's taught, you're really teaching all these canons about this rigidity to, you know, to justify that invisible hand thing about, to justify that the economy, you know, sorts itself out and comes to the right equilibrium because of all these stupid assumptions. So you can't really talk about it. I mean, sometimes I have tried to put it in there in a mainstream course, but that's also why I teach in Africana studies and not in economics, because I can't really stand to teach all that stuff. Um, uh, how is it different from, what was the other part? The mainstream economics and- Political economy. Oh, political and, economy. And so, fields that ignore co ops And fields yeah. that ignore, right. So even political economy often ignores co-ops because in the, the standard political economy is really um, a critique of capitalism, but it's not a study of solidarity economics, if you can understand what I mean by that. So political economy uh, is really the pre, is really what, the, is the economic thought that Marx comes out of. And so Marxism is part of political economy. And what's different about political economy from mainstream economy is political economy understands that there are politics, power relationships, inequalities, and uh, existing uh, inequalities that get in the way of the perfect markets working the way the traditional economics thinks, right? So political economy is about broadening, seeing economics as a social science rather than a natural science. So there are no natural laws. It's all about human relationships and how people relate, who has power, who doesn't, how people gain their power, recognizing that, connecting political analysis with economic analyses. So it's the tool that helps us to get to solidarity economics, but it doesn't necessarily go all the way down to worrying about grassroots economic development and co-op development. Now, political economists are more likely to look at co-ops and worker ownership and labor unions and labor power and that kind of thing, but they don't automatically do it. So I actually studied political economy. That was my field uh, that I got my PhD in, um, but we still didn't study cooperatives. Um, 
Now, actually, they do. UMass actually has a certificate in cooperative economics now in their economics department. But when I was there, they didn't have it. The, the political economists who were there didn't see, see community economics and cooperatives as a necessary subfield. Now, luckily, it's gotten more play, but, we, but still a lot of places don't teach it. Business schools right? I think 98% of business schools don't teach this stuff either, either, even though cooperative economics is a viable business model. They ignore it because, again, most business schools are still teaching traditional. They barely even teach political economy, let alone, you know, let alone cooperatives. So it's kind of a pecking order. Um, when I was teaching myself cooperative economics, the only places that were actually teaching it that I could find were some of the progressive business schools, but there were very few of them. And mostly, again, it was communities of people teaching ourselves, or you have to go to the Europeans or the Canadians who are ahead of us on teaching and learning this stuff. So um, there's very few places in US academia where you can get a solid course on community economics, cooperative, solidarity economy, except slowly there's more and more of us in the field who are teaching it somehow, somewhere, some way. Um, and so the co-op economics part and the solidarity economics, solidarity economics part is about teaching people about human agency, about uh, social economic development, right? Human beings taking charge of their own economic development, understanding and making visible, invisible work like childcare and home care um, and other invisible actions, uh, bartering, right? So when we try to teach those kinds of things, none of that is really in the economics canon, but it's in this, what, we, what I call community economics canon. Um, but there aren't really any real textbooks or you know, most of us weren't trained in school about this. It's learning it through talking with other people, you know, going to the social forums, going to co-op research meetings, reading other people's work, uh, thinking it through together, trying to write stuff about it, and then trying to work with students on how to think about it. And the funny thing is students are much more interested in that than they are in traditional economics. This stuff really resonates to them, and they can see, you know, the bartering and the other stuff happening in their communities. Um, you know, solidarity economics and cooperative economics also talks about, you know, it's much more empowering. Right. Uh, after I got my PhD in economics, I used to say, you know, we, it's, the, it's that I understand now why it's called the dismal science, because all anybody talks about is what's wrong. Right. What people can't do, what the economy isn't doing, what's going wrong. Um, and I wanted to study what economics could do. And so, again, finding solidarity economics cooperatives was a way for me to look at possibilities and um, and ways that people were actually overcoming the barriers and the oppressions of capitalism and doing something different and new and better um, and making something work that wasn't the way everybody else was doing it or the way you were supposed to do it. Um, and that's really empowering when you talk to people. That's why I'm hoping we can start teaching it in prisons because just even if they never start a co-op, talking about and thinking about how you can be in control of your own economy, right? How you can think of a being somebody who can create well-being for yourself and your community without exploiting other people, without having to exploit other people to do it, using other people in a way that's collective and collaborative so that everybody gains, right? Teaching that is just invaluable for life, right? It changes how we think about life, how we see ourselves in the world, how we think about change and transformation and empowerment and agency. Um, and, you know, yet we barely do it. Um, and, you know, we could go into a million reasons why we don't teach that way, but um, that's the part that excites me about economics and we can talk about it in that way and not just talk about, you know, the high unemployment rates or the, the, the Wall Street stock market debacles and that kind of thing, but really talk about what people, human beings are doing to help themselves, their families and their neighbors and how that's changing their neighborhood, that kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you.